Hello. This program can reveal a secret Saudi Arabian plan to secure nuclear weapons. As talks got underway this week between Iran and six world powers in Geneva designed to contain Iran's nuclear program, Newsnight has learned that such is Saudi Arabia's concern about that nuclear ambition of Iran that it's taken steps to secure its own nuclear capability by striking a deal with Pakistan. Our diplomatic editor, Mark Urban, has this report. Several sources have told Newsnight that Saudi Arabia has invested in Pakistani nuclear projects and believes it could obtain atomic bombs at will. And while the kingdom's quest is seen as countering Iran's nuclear program, it's now possible that the Saudis might be able to deploy such devices more quickly than the Islamic Republic. A few months ago, a senior NATO decision maker told me he'd read intelligence reports that said that nuclear weapons made in Pakistan for Saudi Arabia were sitting waiting for delivery. A former Pakistani intelligence official added, certainly the Pakistanis maintain a certain number of warheads on the basis that if the Saudis asked for them, they would immediately be delivered. A few years ago, Saudi Arabia started signalling to its closest ally its intention of having a nuclear option. When I was working in the White House, the Saudis were extremely alarmed by the possibility that Iran would acquire nuclear weapons, and they told uh, every American visitor they could get their hands on that if Iran got nuclear weapons, the Saudis would have to have nuclear weapons. They couldn't possibly live in the shadow of Iran having nuclear weapons. The most important message was sent by Saudi King Abdullah to US Middle East envoy Dennis Ross in 2009. Abdullah promised that Saudi would get the bomb if Iran did. But was it just a bluff designed to get the US to rein in Iran? The Saudis speak about Iran and nuclear matters very seriously. Uh, they don't bluff on this issue, and perhaps they wish they could, but they know that unless they speak firmly and even shout, they're not going to be heard in Washington, D.C. There have long been rumors of the deal between Saudi and Pakistan in which funding for Pakistan's bomb was linked to Saudi access to atomic weapons in an emergency. Indeed, photographs have surfaced of visits more than a decade ago by the Saudi Defence Minister to Pakistan's nuclear research establishment. Nawaz Sharif, Pakistan's then and now Prime Minister, sits in the centre, and A.Q. Khan, the nuclear scientist, to the right. I do think the Saudis believe that they have some understanding with Pakistan, that in extremists they would have claim to acquire nuclear weapons from Pakistan. I think uh, Saudi Arabia has become so exasperated with the United States that they probably judge that the time for ambiguity has passed. The Saudis have also shown elsewhere that they can act counter to US interests and pay for the consequences. They could simply compensate Pakistan for the wider cost of delivering nukes. The Saudis have always said that they would never imagine that there could be only a Shiite bomb. It's they, the leaders of the two, the guardians of the two holy sites and the, the champion of the Sunni Arab world. So that's kind of very much in their DNA. And secondly, there's lots of circumstantial evidence. There's evidence of recent contingency planning. For example, Saudi Arabia has created additional launch pads for its Chinese-made ballistic missiles. They target Israel and Iran. By early 2013, intelligence reports were circulating that warheads were ready in Pakistan. This has been an extremely... Uh... A former head of Israeli military intelligence argued this September that Iran just had to go nuclear for Saudi to activate its nuclear cash and carry. Because the Saudis will not wait one month. They already paid for the bomb. They will go to Pakistan and bring what they need to bring. And then every 
regional superpower like Egypt, Turkey, Iraq will be nuclear. The intelligence that Saudi nuclear weapons could now be sitting in Pakistan ready to go appears to have come via the Israelis. Others think the deal might work differently, that Pakistan might send missiles like these Shaheen twos and warheads to the kingdom, but under its own control, insulating Pakistan from the huge problems that might follow giving nukes to Saudi Arabia outright. From Pakistan's standpoint, I think uh, just giving Saudi Arabia a handful of nuclear weapons would be a very provocative action. It could jeopardize uh, Pakistan's access to international funds that the economy needs. So I've always thought it was much more likely, the most likely option, if Pakistan were to honor any agreement, would be for Pakistan to send its own forces, its own troops, um, armed with nuclear weapons and with delivery systems to be deployed in Saudi Arabia. Many experts think that Iran is lurking just below the nuclear threshold. But the Saudi situation is fascinating to me because they may be that little bit closer even than Iran. This situation has been kept stable by American leadership in the Middle East. But that's a factor that can no longer be taken for granted. Well, we gave details of our story to both the Pakistani and Saudi Arabia governments earlier today. The Pakistan Foreign Ministry has described our story as speculative, mischievous and baseless. They add, Pakistan is a responsible nuclear weapon state with robust command and control structures and comprehensive export controls. The Royal Saudi Arabian Embassy in London has also issued a statement pointing out that the Kingdom is a signatory to the Non-Proliferation Treaty and has worked for a nuclear-free Middle East. It says the UN's failure to make the Middle East a nuclear-free zone is one of the reasons the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia rejected the offer of a seat on the UN Security Council. It says the Saudi Foreign Minister has stressed that this lack of international action has put the region under the threat of a time bomb that cannot easily be diffused by manoeuvring around it. Mark, um, the significance of both of these statements? Well, the Pakistani one is a denial. We might as well take that on the chin. Uh, it, it's fascinating, uh, all the same. Uh, it highlights the fact that if there is this understanding, and we believe from the many people we've spoken to, including Pakistanis, that such an understanding exists, it does depend on the goodwill of both parties. Now, uh, we do have uh, information from people, as I say, including on the Pakistani side, that would run counter to the Pakistani uh, government statement tonight. The Saudi one, very interesting indeed. Generally speaking, the Saudi Arabian government doesn't comment on press stories, and yet we have this statement tonight, which is certainly not in any sense a denial of our story. In fact, it even seems to up the ante, rather, by talking about the dangers of the current situation in the Middle East and the failure of the UN Security Council and other international processes to avert the danger as the kingdom sees it. My colleague Kirsty Walk speaking to Mark Urban. Well, to discuss the points raised in that film, Kirsty was joined by William Patey, a former ambassador to Saudi Arabia, and by Kyron Skinner, a former member of the US Defense Policy Board. The significance of this moment, do you think? Well, I think it's uh, significant in that uh, this has come out publicly and publicly due to journalism, but uh, inter interestingly, uh, one asks why at this time, uh, and it may be that the Saudis are not too unhappy at the idea that a speculation about their ability to acquire nuclear weapons via Pakistan um, it may suit them at a time when they're anxious about the uh, U.S. commitment to uh, uh, to stop Pakistan, uh, to stop Iran's uh, nuclear ambition. So there, there is a this this could suit them, and I think the their non-denial is interesting. Well, uh, uh, Karen Skinner, coming to you. I mean, in a sense, it is evidence of the Saudis' exasperation with uh, American foreign policy. Absolutely. We can't blame the United States fully for what's happening in Riyadh, but we have to be able to say that the retreat that the U.S. has demonstrated um, is in 2013 alone um, by the Obama administration from the greater Middle East 
has been troubling to the Saudis, to the Israelis, to all of our major allies in the region. There's a sense with the, by the Saudis that the U.S. is reversing literally a half century of leadership being the great power with the most predominant role in the broader Middle East. And so what are the Saudis to do but take measures into their own hands? hands and I think they're doing that with their decision not to take a seat on the UN Security Council. If they're somewhat pleased and looking the other way as the story floats about a possible, you know, nuclear capability in their own country, I think it's just a, a, another example of how confused, exasperated they are at the United yeah. States do, for not being the U.S. it once was in the Middle East. Yeah, well, well, so, well do you think that the Saudis feel that, you know, it, they're not as valuable to the U.S. anymore? Well, I think some of their certainties have uh, disappeared. Yeah. I think they have been reliant on a U.S. security guarantee for quite some time. And I think, the, you know, the, the, as they would see it, the failure of the U.S. to uh, act on the re when a red line was crossed in Syria, the, their, their concern that they may be doing a deal with the, uh, Iran and the Iran may be pulling the wool over their eyes, I don't think that's the case, mm -hmm. but you can see it from a, a Saudi point of view. The U.S. attitude to what's happening in Egypt, all of those are major disagreements with the U.S. and a sense that the U.S is perhaps not the guarantor they thought uh, they were. But even if a deal is done with the Iranians, do you think the, the Saudis would trust that anyway? Well, I think the Saudi point of view would be you can't trust the Iranians yeah. uh, and therefore they would be sceptical. I think there is an opportunity to be, uh, bring the Saudis on board and to make sure that any, any progress on a deal How? with Iran... How? By engagement, by uh, talking to them, by uh, being uh, open with them, uh, allaying fears. I mean, I think the Saudi fears of an absence of a Western guarantee are exaggerated, mm -hmm. but it's perfectly understandable, given the, given the sequence of events that have happened recently, that they should be in this position. The war on drugs is being lost. That was the claim made by Kofi Annan this week. The former UN Secretary General has recommended the criminalization of drug use should be replaced by a public health approach.